Hello, it's the Great Canadian Bagel here coming to you with the first post first round election update for the French 2022 presidential election series. Uh, yeah, we're a week post election. We've had a bunch of polls. We have the first round data, the actual first round data, and we have campaign developments. So the first thing here, so compared to my last forecast, uh, Le Pen has slipped a little bit. It's not so much that her second round polling has changed. It's that the first round polling numbers were wrong. So in other words, she was forecast to do slightly better by my model originally. And I went through that, some of the issues with that in the... Uh, the video on Thursday, and she was also, or Macron was also forecast to do slightly worse, Zamora was for, forecast to do a decent bit better, etc. All these collective misses on regards to my model versus the polling got different second round, first round results. And when you actually sub in the real first round results, you get a number closer to this for the second round i would argue or i this is not just or it is important to note is le pen's first round is or second round sorry polling is going down slightly she is losing some ground uh just before the first round she was being pulled 47 to 51 range it was only one poll 51, though. Keep that in mind. Now she's going to be getting pulled 45 to 49 range. So, her brackets have moved very slightly. So she's doing marginally worse. Does that mean she's going to lose? I do not think so. Or, sorry. It's not necessary i think at this point the election is so close because again keep in mind the general speaking margin of error for my model given the amount of data going into it is approximately two percent it's not exactly two percent but it's close enough that i just round off because the precision doesn't really matter frankly i'll be honest i don't even necessarily think my model scientifically speaking should have two decimal places here i don't think i have the sig fig precision for that but i don't care the numbers the model spits out that number so whatever we're getting that number that said within mar it is close like the margin of error doesn't overlap at all but it's close enough that very small movements in the next week could have a huge deciding factor to that i think the debate coming out i believe it's the 20th is going to be the deciding push it was pretty critical for macron's sweep in 2017 le pen had a mediocre debate performance some argue it was a bad debate performance i can't really put too much set or comment too much on the quality of her debate performance because my French skills are pretty poor, so I can't actually watch it in English, and watching a translated version isn't very good. You're going to lose a lot of subtleties of wordplay and meaning and decisiveness of deliverance, because oftentimes, to no fault of their own, a uh, person giving live translate stumbles and is awkward because they're literally trying to translate someone live. That is understandably very difficult. But it makes watching the debate, the points are a lot less. Because a lot of it goes into, quote-unquote, winning a debate is the delivery, the conviction, and the performance. And you lose pretty much all of that through translation. So. That all said, that's basically just me saying I won't really be able to analyze and say who's going to do well or bad in the debates. But I can say I think that is the going to be the deciding factor. If Le Pen can really punch Macron right in the nose, 
I think she has a very good chance of winning. Because at this point, the trick for Le Pen isn't getting more voters. I think she actually has more voters than Macron. Le Pen's trick here is that her voters don't vote the same level of intensity as Macron voters. Young, blue-collar, low-income, don't vote as high as older, wealthier, white-collar voters. And that's the main difference. The, the French election right now, in the second round, is essentially the dichotomy of the dispossessed and disaffected youth versus the, for lack of better term, the French boomers. That's the main political persuasion going here. Le Pen has skillfully tapped into the disaffected and uh, down, or I'll just keep, stay with disaffected, the disaffected youth. And when I say youth, I, this literally goes up to 40. The divide is really like 44 minus for Le Pen and 50, 45 plus for Macron. That seems really be the divide. So essentially, Millennials and Zoomers with Le Pen, Gen X is kind of split. I think Gen X would be split there. Not 100%. No. Gen X slightly to Macron. That's what it is. And the Boomers and anyone else left of old generations strongly from Macron. That seems really to divide. And this well, might seem strange at first glance. Because typically people assume younger people are going to be more liberal and progressive. But not only do I think that is actually getting less true in and of itself, the important thing to consider with this election is this not an election between a left-wing candidate and a right-wing candidate. Macron, by any meaningful consideration of the left and right dichotomy, which I will, have, I will once again reiterate, I don't really like left and right. I think it's too overly simplified. But any meaningful understanding of the left-right dichotomy, Macron is not left-wing at all. He's pro-business, pro-free mark, or sorry, uh, pro-free markets. Generally, at least rhetorically, is more staunchly anti-immigrant than any left-wing candidate in France more tough on crime than any left-wing candidate in France. On these things, he's not as strong as Le Pen. Le Pen is very anti-immigration, very strong against things like NATO and any uh, international organization, being much more nationalist herself, being much more against the influence of Islam in France and the quote-unquote culture war. And this should make sense, then, why the demographics are splitting this way. Macron is representing the older-style conservatism, and Le Pen is representing a newer, populist, insurgent conservatism. A trend which I've iterated many times now, is taking over the energetic side of conservatism everywhere. And in fact, you could even argue that Le Pen, and to a lesser extent Zamor, being so staunchly anti-immigration, among other things, and harping on terrorism and security and crime and uh, Islam, has caused Macron to drift rightwards socially. He was always rightwards economically. At least more right than left. You could argue some points on the economic issues, but generally speaking, he seems to be trying to increase free market competitiveness in France.
So, where does this stand here? Well, Frank or Le Pen is the down, not the downtrodden, uh, is the underdog candidate here. I think she has perfect possibility of winning, but it relies on voters to vote, which is not certain. Because again, the demographics that support her do not vote in the same intensity as the ones that support Macron. The other wild card here is the Mélenchon voter. The Mélenchon voter has a lot of overlap with Le Pen's voters. They're not exactly the same person. Uh, Mélenchon's voters are more concentrated in, for example, Paris in the suburbs of though don't over picture that because he got i think 7.8 million votes and only 1.6 million in ile de france so a lot of his vote is there but he got uh what, what does that work out like 80 percent of his vote in the rest of france so he is strong in france but he's has a base everywhere or sorry, he's strong in Paris, but he's a base across all of France. But his voters are the big wild card. He has anti-endorsed Le Pen, though I'm questioning whether that's going to matter to his voters. And he, But he has not endorsed Macron. And I think more importantly to all of this is the Mélenchon voter has basically most of the same concerns with Le Pen voters. A lot of his voters are young, overwhelmingly, and also relatively poor. You could argue there's an ideological division between the ones who are the, this demographic that vote Le Pen versus Mélenchon, but ignoring fundamental ideological differences, and I would argue if the ideology is the deciding factor, that person just won't vote because... If you are, let's say, a socialist, there's not much of a difference. There's some small issues, but your classical socialist is not going to really be too fussed about either candidate. The only reason why they would strongly support one or the other is uh, essentially fear. If you don't... If you don't think uh, Le Pen, if you, uh, uh, sorry, the word phrase is, some people really think Le Pen will be very destructive to France and or the West. Remains to be seen. There are some arguments, some ways, some arguments, other ways. I always tend to caution myself when people argue that, because oftentimes it is used or not used, it, it is overplayed. You, For example, you see in the U.S. you had uh, the Democrats would often ar often argued in 2016 that Donald Trump would be extremely destructive to the U.S. And you really, like, I don't really see the argument that he did much that any other, that any other Republican presidential candidate wouldn't have done other than say mean things on twitter a lot and was a bit narcissistic but that in itself wasn't that impactful to the u.s political system the u.s political system was already falling apart which is the main point anything that trump himself did was kind of relevant because it just kind of exposed the u.s system was already collapsing and by that i mean the trust in the system was already collapsing he didn't do anything unique in himself. And I think that's the same that's going on in France with Le Pen. Now, maybe you could argue it might be bad for NATO or the EU if Le Pen wins. But if you are if you are a Le Pen voter, you might be happy that those things are happening. So, But in France in itself, I don't think Le Pen winning or losing has any meaningful impact on France itself, quote-unquote, destructiveness-wise or damaging-wise. It's really a case of the reason why she's doing well 
is because France is already in a really bad state, social cohesion-wise. She does not... A candidate like Le Pen, or like Donald Trump, does not come close or win an election because the country is in a good state. Candidates like these emerge and do well because the country is doing bad in some way, by some metric, to some people. Often, these candidates like this, I cannot say for Le Pen herself because I do not know how honest she is. Oftentimes people can, the candidates like this can go hard on, the, they're going to fix issues and then they don't really do much. In some regards, they do good. some regards, they do bad. But the important thing isn't individual candidates or individual people. It's the patterns in the movement. Le Pen, in particular in France, is a hundred percent a response because French politics for the last two decades has essentially ignored the growing economic and social problems of the youth and the, the earliest edge of this youth are now in their 40s and this has created this huge rise in very strong populist candidates. Mélenchon is equally a symptom of this problem. This is not a problem in the candidates. The candidates are a symptom of the underlying societal problem. If France, the French economy and the French culture was in a healthy state, Le Pen would not be winning. It would be some loot. It would be Macron or some milk toast other centrist. Think about the U.S. in the '90s. It was uh, first election was George Bush Senior versus Bill Clinton. Two milk toast, relatively centrist candidates. Boring simple no one thought the culture or the economy in the u.s was in a bad state you look at 2016 donald trump the insurgent populist on the right bernie sanders the insurgent populist on the left these two candidates don't come out of nowhere they come because a lot of people thought that there was an underlying issue in the economy, in the culture. And it's not an issue of, oh, I'm doing bad. It's an issue of perceived unfairness. And to the point at this day, in 2022, at least in Canada, I can say there is a very clear perceived unfairness. And it's not anything to do with a lot of the more social justice -y things. It, it bear simple clear problem housing more than anything else housing it's the biggest symptom of this but it's this overall societal contempt for newer generations there seems to be this overwhelming systematic systematic inertia Keeping the same philosophy that governed the West in the 90s in place. Even though the circumstances of the 90s no longer apply. You could even argue maybe the circumstances of the 80s. Again, they still don't apply. You see this around the world with, right now with extremely high inflation rates and a lot of incumbent governments 
seemingly uncaring as they print more money and spend even deeper deficit spending. This is a further symptom of this problem where the systems have gotten so bloated and have gotten so entrenched that they seem unwilling or unable to fix legitimate problems. There's no rational argument someone can have, for example, in Canada, which I believe my understanding from previous commenters is a legitimate problem in France, where housing prices can double in seven years, while the economy has only grown an average of 2% a year. There's no rational argument someone can make that that is something that is sustainable or good, but yet, largely, the only political action that occurs is lip service and irrelevant policy decisions that in some ways just stimulate demand more or in other ways don't meaningfully address the problem. In a lot of ways, this is also true in France. I can't give you all the specifics because I'm not a French citizen myself and I do not live every single problem in France. But from what I've gone from plenty of commenters, from reading the news, various news sources, from seeing the problems that people talk about, a lot of them are the same problems. The cost of living is going up. Housing is going up. People can't, no longer feel that they can afford to have kids. Those are the economic problems. Then you look at social problems. You look at uh, young, like, for example, Zoomers. One of the highest rates of mental illness of any generation ever recorded. There's huge angst, but like, what's the word for it? Angst is the wrong word. There's a huge amount of social un unwellness in that uh, for example hookup culture has pretty much broken down traditional dating cycles creating a large amount of people who are cannot cr get into a relationship or cannot find a s satisfactory one leading to both men and women feeling extremely excluded alone isolated the rise of the internet has really kind of broken down traditional social structures so people don't interact with friends very frequently face to face don't really do much face to face it's a lot less than it would have happened 20 years ago and this has further isolated people there's all of these problems just to name some and no solutions none of the political leaders seem interested and tackling them. And one of these issues, very particular to France, though much of the West faces this, is regards to immigration. There is a genuine fear among many French people, and many Canadians, and many Americans, and many Brits, etc., that the current immigration policies are diluting and destroying the culture of the country they were in, not because there's anything particularly wrong with the immigrants themselves, because how the policies are to, uh, the policies architectured, because how the policy is implemented, the immigrants come in, form secluded, uh, essentially colonies, in the new, the now host country. And do not integrate. There's no effort made to make sure that these groups integrate with the general culture. There's no effort made to make sure that these groups have the resources they need, but also actually contribute positively to the overall society. And these two things are very detrimental because they break down national cohesion 
if you do not make sure that the people coming into the country actually care about the country they're coming in and become part of it. Plenty do. And it's not even a problem with immigration on its face. It's a problem with how it's being constructed and done. No one is solving this. These are the problems that are causing Le Pen and lesser extent Mélenchon, lesser extent Zamor, to rise strongly. Le Pen might not win this election. But I do not see Macron fixing any of these societal problems, and I think they're only going to get worse. Now, in a lot of ways, France might be a bit more insulated than others because, as to my understanding, any French viewer or even a European viewer from the EU might be able to correct me this, but the European Central Bank, or the European Union, sorry, requires or strictly limits deficit spending so that the the impact of ludicrous over expenditure public budgets is heavily clamped down so the rise of debt is a lot slower and similarly i believe there's a stricter uh, control of printing of money though i'm not a hundred percent confident on that one but that that is the impression i've gotten from what i've in my research so that has kind of insulated france to a lot of these issues but make no mistake if even just the u.s continues to have uncontrolled inflation with the fed and the federal government or the u.s federal reserve and the federal government actively fighting each other not officially, but the U.S. federal government blowing out its spending at the same time as the Fed raising interest rates is actively fighting each other when it comes to inflation. It is going to have cascading effects everywhere else. It is going to sustain it. So I don't think these issues are going to be solved anytime soon. And right now, you might be able to argue, if you are an anti-Le Pen, that maybe Le Pen is the quote-unquote dangerous candidate now. I've not seen it too hard myself. I think she's definitely a national populist. But at least in her rhetoric, especially the last five years, she doesn't seem to be a very extreme version of it. But make no mistake. If these problems are not fixed now or in the near future, Eventually, in the case of France, the disaffected voter bloc isn't going to be voting for someone as simple as Le Pen or someone as simple as Mélenchon. No. Arguably, Mélenchon has all the same baggage as Le Pen. He's just left wing versus right wing, which, again, I don't like those terms, but... Because, frankly, the two of them share more in common than they do with Macron. But we're going to ignore that for a second. Right now, it's these two relatively... centrist the wrong or relatively moderate versions of national... or of populist right and populist left candidates. If the underlying systems continue the way they are, if housing continues to rise, inflation continues to hit people the uh, societal culture continues to unravel a prime example of the unraveling is birth rates by the way birth rates continue plumping what you're going to see is instead of the relatively tame version of these populist candidates you're going to see an extreme populist pop up not now Maybe not even in 2027. But eventually, if these issues do not get resolved in a satisfactory way, you're going to see a very extreme person to come up. I cannot predict to you who this extreme person is, but to just go back some historical examples, the Soviets, the Bolsheviks, did not take into power in Russia overnight. 
it was decades and a major world war of the russian regime not properly adequate not adequately addressing the disaffected urban populace of russia this spiraled out of control into a civil war and where the Bolsheviks took over leading to people like Lenin and Stalin the Nazis didn't take over power overnight they didn't just walk in out where the government now it was a movement that built out of the disaffected center-right population eh, I don't necessarily want to say center-right because the Nazis were a bit of a weird bag of policies but the disaffected nationalist population of Germany, I think more accurate, built up steam, especially with the Great Depression, and eventually took over the country. Because the issues, national prestige, humiliation, Treaty of Versailles, uh, the economy in the, end of, in the end, were not addressed in a way that satisfied people to get them to stop voting for this kind of candidate. These are just two examples. But this continues. And it goes back in time, too. Countries that do not adequately address democracies, that do not adequately... Eh, no, just countries. Countries that do not adequately address the concerns of voters... Of their citizens build up pressure they build up pressure and eventually they are going to fail in a lot of ways a populist candidate like Le Pen can be a way to vent that steam if that candidate does actually fix the problem there's no guarantee but at the same time not trying to fix the problem also doesn't help And these things get worse before they get better. This isn't new. This isn't a problem that came out of nowhere. It's really the last 20 years of social and economic policy is collapsing Western democracies. You can see it most notably, most clearly, most succinctly in voter turnout rates they've been steadily declining the last 20 years i mean possibly before then but very notably in the last 20 years they've declined very notably fertility rate another example declining fertility rate is a perfect example of a societal ill that is not being addressed why aren't people having kids There's a lot of reasons, way too many to get into here. But nobody, largely speaking, in the West, the only vaguely Western politician I can think of who's even trying to really do anything about that is Viktor Orban. Though, ironically, he's the hate stock of a lot of the media. He seems to be genuinely trying to fix one of these societal ills, at least. But fertility rate is a prime example of a problem that no one can possibly deny. It's literally undeniable. Fertility rate is collapsing globally, but particularly in the West. And no one's tried. The only solution that people have to the collapsing of fertility rate is to increase immigration targets. Which, first off, is kind of an evil policy. It has nothing to do with the immigration, immigration itself. But it's, it's pretty evil for a politician to sit there and be like, ah, birth rates are collapsing for my own citizens. Oh, let's just import people to solve the problem. What? The, the, peop, the peop, people, largely speaking, want to have killed kids. In a lot of ways, having children is literally the entire purpose of existence. People do not just suddenly decide not to do the only reason they exist, to, the only thing they exist for. They don't just wake up one day and like, I'm not going to do the only thing I exist to do, which is to propagate my genetics. 
That's literally the biological imperative of life. If people aren't doing it, there is some large societal ill that is limiting it. No addressing. But I'm going to leave that here. I might continue this in a future video. Or I might just pop up every now and then in these videos. I don't know. Uh, if you want me to really dissect this, let me know in the comments below. But uh, that said, though, uh, just to wrap up here, just to reiterate to the final point, I think Le Pen can win. Though it's looking like Macron will be able to eke out a second win just because the voters will not turn out. And all I have to say to that is if you are a Le Pen supporter and you do not vote and Macron wins, that's on you. If you are a Macron supporter and Macron loses and you do not vote, that's on you. As I've always said in all these videos, vote. It is the only exercise of control any of us can do to impact national policy. To vote. With that, I hope you all have a lovely week and I will see you Tuesday. Probably with something different than the Ontario update because there's been no polls since the last update for Ontario, but we'll see. I'll play it by ear a bit. But with some video on Tuesday. With that, I bid you adieu. If you liked the video, please like, share, and subscribe. I forgot to say that. Not YouTube things. But otherwise, I bid you adieu.